Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, so thank you very much for the um, introduction and invitation. Um, it's a, it's, it's really a tremendous honor for, for me to speak here at this conference. Um, I, I first had uh, the opportunity to, to meet Luke, maybe, um, I think maybe it was about three or four years ago. Um, and since then I've, um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of exchanges with him and I, I really appreciate how, um, how kind and generous and encouraging he's always been. Um, one of my, uh, one of my last, uh, last trips before the, before the pandemic, I was in Paris and Luke uh, helped, um, um, uh, hosted me for much of the trip. Um, and Luke's mathematics has, has certainly had a, a great impact on me, both from exchanges with him and from, um, from studying his work uh, directly. Um, so yeah, so thank you, Luke, and, and happy birthday. Um, so what I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk about um, um, uh, some results, I guess, in the uh, area of, uh, of logarithmic algebraic geometry. So this is a subject of which Luke is, of course, one of the uh, uh, principal architects. Um, and uh, in particular, I want to I want to talk about some some versions of log syntomic homology and some uh, comparisons with near periodic nearby cycles, um, and uh, start by talking about logarithmic homology theories in general. So what I'm going to talk about is um, uh, is joint work and in progress with uh, uh, with Bargov Bod and and Dustin Clausen. Um, right. So I want to start by um, so, so I want to talk about log syntomic cohomology and, 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 and this and sort of an integral version of log syntomic cohomology. Um, but to get there, I want to start by, by first just talking about logarithmic piatic cohomology theories in general. Um, so I think somehow the starting point for this is the following example. Uh, so if X is a smooth variety uh, over a field K um, and uh, D sitting inside X is a normal crossings divisor, Uh, and uh, J is the uh, open inclusion from U, uh, meaning X minus D sitting inside X. Um, then one constructs the logarithmic Durham complex. Uh, sorry, K is a field. Uh, <laughs> constructs uh, the logarithmic Durham complex. Omega upper star of x log d. Um, and so this is, uh, I guess, this is a quasi coherent uh, sheaf of differential graded algebras on x. And basically, it's, it's uh, generated. Well, so this is, sorry. So I guess I should say that it's a subsheaf of the Durham complex of u. So it's a subsheaf of the Durham complex of u. And it's a subsheaf which is generated by. Uh, well, differential forms on X, as well as sort of uh, dxi over xi, where these come from local equations of the divisor D. Um, right, and so I guess it's a, so this is a, it's a definition of the logarithmic Durham complex in this context, and in, in characteristic zero, it gives a, um, it computes the, the Durham cohomology of, 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 of the open complement, um, which I, one reason this is a good definition. Um, right, so, so this definition, uh, I guess it generalizes to the, to the theory of log structures. Um, so, um, right. right, so maybe I should say this computes cohomology of U in characteristic zero. Okay, so Cato and Fontaine de Lucy Uh, define more generally uh, the notion of a log structure on a scheme. Uh, so on a scheme X, uh, so it's given by uh, a sheaf of monoids, which I'll write as M sub X. on the atoll site of X uh, and a map of sheaves of monoids. So I'll call this alpha, which goes from M sub X uh, to, uh, 
to the monoid, which is just a structure sheaf of, of X, but with the, uh, the monoid structure given by multiplication instead of addition, uh, with the property that alpha inverse of, uh, of the units uh, is isomorphic to the units uh, via alpha. Um, and so then this the structure is called a log scheme. Um, so for example, uh, if, if we're in the setting as above, um, so if D sitting inside X is the normal crossings divisor, um, then we have a log structure given by uh, M sub X is gonna be those functions um, which are invertible on, on U. Okay, so I wanna fix some notation here. So if, if we have a log structure like this, some notation for further on. Um, so if we have a log structure, this is also going to be, uh, um, we also obtain a sort of a, well, so we also define or we notate M sub X bar uh, to be the quotient uh, of M sub X by OX, OX cross. So this is sort of measuring the, the non-triviality of the log structure. Um, and I guess usually uh, we're gonna be in a setting where OX cross is acting freely on MX. Um, so this is again, some sort of sheaf of monoids. Uh, and now M sub X bar uh, is naturally gonna come with a map. Uh, so, so, so from the structure map of the log structure, M sub X uh, comes with a map from M sub X to the following, uh, following sheaf of monoids, which is the sheaf of monoids of, sorry, um, line bundles with a section. Um, so this is, I guess, the, this is represented by A1 mod GM and or good thing, or effective, effective Cartier divisors. Um, right, so this will be useful later on. Um, okay, so, so in general, um, I guess it's a sort of general phenomenon that a lot of cohomology theories that one can define in the world of, uh, world of schemes uh, naturally can be uh, extended to the, to the category of log schemes. Um, and so the example uh, is, uh, right, so, so, so maybe the first example is that if you're given a log scheme over a field, uh, then one can define its log Durham complex. Uh, so I guess we could call this omega upper star of X comma M sub X. Uh, and this is, well, this is defined sort of similarly as the Durham complex is defined similarly via generators and relations. Um, so, and you start with the Durham complex. Well, I guess I'll say this sort of informally. Um, it's, and then you add, uh, you sort of formally add uh, objects D log of M for every dm divided by m uh, for every element m of this, uh, this sheaf of monoids. Um, so this is supposed to be d log of m, and then you sort of enforce the, um, you, you sort of impose the, the appropriate relations um, for, for the Durham complex and for what d log of m is supposed to satisfy. Um, so this generalizes the example uh, of the, logarithmic Durham complex. So this is the first example, uh, but there are many other piatic homology theories uh, for which there are also, uh, also log, uh, log versions. Um, so uh, for example, there's log crystalline homology uh, developed by Kato. So let's say we have a log scheme uh, over FP. Uh, then can define uh, the log crystalline cohomology. Um, and this is defined, uh, right, so, sorry, so maybe what I should say is that this is going to be some sort of lift if, well, in, in nice situations of the log Durham cohomology. Uh, to ZP. Uh, from FP. 
Uh, and this is defined, and this log crystalline cohomology, so I guess this is absolute log crystalline cohomology, um, is defined using, well, I mean, crystalline cohomology is defined using the, the crystalline site, and uh, one sort of defines a log version of the crystalline site to, to define log crystalline cohomology. So adapt definition of a crystalline site. Um, so I guess there's the example, there's also the examples, two other examples that I wanna keep in mind, but maybe I'm gonna come back to sort of later are symptomic cohomology. Uh, so this is gonna be some sort of filtered Frobenius eigenspace of, uh, um, of log Durham cohomology, but in, in mixed characteristic uh, and uh, piatic nearby cycle cohomology. So this is for schemes over ZP. And this is going to be the cohomology, the Atal cohomology of the rigid generic fiber. So for formal schemes over, over ZP. So these are also two examples you want to keep in mind. And we'll come back to more later. Um, but I, I guess the most powerful uh, uh, of these piatic theories is, is given by prismatic cohomology. Um, and uh, so uh, a logarithmic version of prismatic cohomology has been developed by, uh, by Koshikawa. Um, so, um, so given a prism a comma i, well then prismatic cohomology of some cohomology theory for formal schemes over a mod i that lives in uh, modules over a, um, and one can uh, one can generalize this to log schemes. So can take uh, the prismatic cohomology. of uh, log formal schemes. Um, and uh, actually, so, so Koshikawa considers a, uh, say, more general situation where, where a, a comma i is, is also have, allowed to have some sort of log structure. Um, and uh, and this, this cohomology theory is, is uh, I mean, there are a lot of you know, structure theorems in prismatic cohomology, like the hot sheet comparison and so forth, and these these have adaptations to the log setting where instead of differential forms, you have log differential forms. Um, so there's a, there's a log prismatic cohomology. And this was also preceded by um, uh, work of uh, Cessna Vicius and Koshikawa uh, in the case of semi-stable schemes. Uh, over OC and where the prism is is a is a prism A and uh, comma OC. Um, right. So um, um, so this is an important special case where um, it's done earlier. Um, right. So so in general, why you know why does one want? Uh, what is the motivation for having these log um, log theories? Well, at least part of the motivation is that uh, I mean these various types of piatic cohomology theories um, are uh, are related to each other in various ways, uh, which. Uh, Governed by, I guess, part of the subject of, of, uh, of piatic Hodge theory, um, and having so a lot of these sort of comparisons can be extended to the log set, um, and so 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 there are relations that you can you can obtain between between piatic cohomology theories and in the log setting uh, as a result. So so let me just explain a corollary, and I guess this is a corollary of, uh, of the theory of log prismatic cohomology. Um, so let's say, um, right, so. So let C be a complete algebraically closed non-Archimedean field, uh, ring of integers, OC and residue field K. Uh, and let X be a smooth proper scheme over OC. Uh, and let D be a normal crossings divisor. Um, and then the conclusion is that if you take the, the dimension of the Atal cohomology groups uh, of mm -hmm. X minus D. Excuse me, is it a related normal crossing divisor? Or uh, sorry. Is it a related normal crossing divisor? Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes. 
relative normal crossings divisor. Thanks. Uh, so then the, the dimension of the etal cohomology, uh, like the dimension of the etal cohomology of the, of the complement is going to be bounded by the dimension of the Durham cohomology uh, of, of the special fiber with log poles uh, along um, the reduction of the special fiber of D. So dimension over K. So, um, right, so this is the type of comparison theorem that, uh, that follows from the theory of um, prismatic cohomology, actually the, uh, the AN of cohomology. So this is, is proved by Bott, Moro, and Schultze. Uh, when D is empty and, and sort of the log, the uh, consequence of the log theory is sort of being able to uh, make some more examples like this. And I guess also we thought about torsion. Sorry? Torsion also. Uh, gets yeah, yes. I think, yes, you have bounds for the, yeah, the mm -hmm. amount of the amount of torsion in terms of the cohomology. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So the first thing I want to do in this talk is I, I want to explain how one can uh, build these cohomology theories. So as I mentioned, um, so for example, um, log, I guess, log crystalline cohomology and log prismatic cohomology are defined uh, using logarithmic, uh, sort of logarithmic versions of the original site theoretic constructions. Um, but what I want to, what I want to explain is that there's also a way that one can sort of reconstruct these logarithmic theories uh, from the non-logarithmic versions. Um, and so this, this will become useful when I, uh, when I want to talk about this log syntomic cohomology later on. Um, and that's, and, and, and the strategy is to use this, uh, use this construction uh, use a use a construction in in logarithmic geometry called the uh, called the infinite root stack. So the first goal is to construct or to give an alternate construction of these theories uh, from the non logarithmic versions using uh, using a general construction called the infinite root stack. Um, okay, so this is a construction. Which is due to Talpo and Vistoli. Uh, and it takes as input. So, so let x, comma, m sub x be a fine and saturated log scheme. Um, and so then what they do is they construct a stack that they call. Uh, so then there is a stack. Uh, which, uh, so let's, we'll denote it, um, the infinite root stack of this log structure. Um, it's denoted like this. Uh, and there's a stack, this, the stack comes with a map to X, um, which is an isomorphism where the log structure is trivial. And somehow the stack is encoding, uh, is sort of encoding the geometry of, of the log structure. Um, so let me give the basic example. So the basic example is that if you have A1 uh, and the log structure is given by the origin, so it's given by the divisor at zero. Um, so then the infinite root stack of A1 comma zero, it's gonna be the inverse limit. Uh, it's gonna be the inverse limit over N of the stack a1 mod mu n, uh, inverse limit of n under divisibility. Uh, and right, so I guess what's going on is that the transition maps are, they're raising to the appropriate power on a1 and they're raising to the appropriate power on mu n. So raising to powers. Um, so I guess, right, so I guess we can think of this as it's, it's like spec of k brackets x to the 1 over n modulo mu n at, at each stage. Um, How does this compare to the Kumari tall site? Uh, yeah, thanks for, the, for that question. I will, I will come back to that in, in, just a, in just a moment, actually. So um, yeah, it's closely related. Um, okay, so... But yeah, maybe let me just let me just do two more examples. Um, so right, so this example can sort of be generalized. So uh, so suppose the log structure uh, comes from a from an effective Cartier. Um, sorry, it comes from a divisor. 
uh, from a, so from a single divisor. So let's say a smooth divisor. Um, so uh, right, so log structure on X. So then that effective Cartier divisor is classified by a map to A1 mod GM. Uh, and then, uh, so this infinite root stack of X comma M sub X, or we could also call it X comma D uh, is given by, uh, so what you do is you form the fiber product of X with, so you have A1 mod GM mapping by multiplication by N to A1 mod GM. And you, you take that fiber product, so you're taking an nth root of the of the divisor of the line bundle with section given um, well, given by this uh, the structure, and you form the inverse limit of n along divisibility. Um, right. So so these are two basic examples, um, and in general, the phenomenon that happens that you sort of see here is that when you take this infinite root stack of x comma m sub x uh, mapping to x, then uh, the fibers at a point well x and x uh, is given by the classifying stack of uh, so if you have a if you have a point x in in in, in the base scheme x then uh, uh, then there's a rank R, which corresponds to the, so then if you let R to be the rank of the monoid M sub X bar, the sort of residual monoid, um, then the fiber of this, 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 this map from the infinite root stack to X is, is given by the classifying stack of the Tate module of uh, the group scheme of, the group scheme of all roots of unity. So take the group scheme of all roots of unity form its Tate module and uh, take its classifying stack to the to the power R. So, so that's what the fiber looks like um, at, at each point. Um, right, so I, I think this is, uh, this is uh, analogous to the construction and maybe partially motivated by the construction of the Kato Nakayama space for, for a complex log structure where this would be replaced by a circle. Um, okay, so, so let me just give the definition. Let me just explain the, the definition in general. So, uh, so if you're given a map from T to X, where X is the log scheme, if you want to lift it to the infinite root stack of X comma M sub X, then what you need to do is, well, so the map from T to X is, is giving you, so F yields uh, a map uh, from f upper star of m x bar uh, to the to the groupoid of uh, of line bundles with section. So I guess this is like a symmetric monoidal functor. And what you need to do is you need to you need to make this map infinitely divisible. So in order to lift it. To give a lift, need to make this map. So let's call this map phi. Need to make phi divisible, i.e., uh, so let me move this down. Need to extend it over the rationalization of the mon monoid f upper star of mx bar. Um, and so that's exactly what we saw sort of going on earlier, which is that you, you know, you had like uh, a log structure given by a single divisor. And so that's, that's like a effective Cartier divisor. That's like a line bundle with a section. And you want to, you want to take the roots of that structure. Okay. Um, but so, so when one formulates it in this way, as in top of the Stolli's paper, um, it's, it's a definition that that's not sort of, it's not really in terms of the, the, the given divisor. It's really in terms of the log structure. Okay, so, um, right. So the general sort of idea or sort of principle is that uh, a cohomology theory uh, with, uh, um, for a log scheme,
uh, is given by its value on the stack. With, and the stack with no log structure. And I guess this is this should say with profinite coefficients. Um, so I guess this is sort of a general sort of idea in this um, in this business. Um, so yeah, so I want to go back to um, so so right. So this this idea has um, at least a couple of antecedents in the literature. Um, so one of them, so to, to go back to, to Arthur's question, uh, is that this is related to um, this is related to Kato's uh, Kummer flat site, not quite the Kummer et al site because we're gonna be taking like P power roots. Um, sorry. So the antecedents are given by Kato's Kummer flat site. Um, so I believe uh, the, the Kummer flat site is closely related to like the, maybe the FPPF or finite flat site of this infinite root stack. This is uh, discussed in the, Help of a Stoli paper, so I believe it should be possible to phrase this construction in terms um, in terms of the Kummer flat site instead of the stack as well. Um, and uh, another antecedent is uh, is Olson's work on uh, the stack of log structures. Uh, and in Olson's setup, as uh, uh, so instead of instead of uh, um, instead of forming this infinite root stack, there's there's a map from X to the stack of log structures. And one considers some sort of uh, relative theory, um, and so I believe that's closely related to the setup because this this sort of infinite root stack can, I think it's it's I think you can you can build it by um, by sort of well, sort of by making by starting with the the map to the stack of log structures and sort of making that in, infinitely divisible uh, or sort of perfect, and that will you know so 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 that will that will sort of make some comparison. So have it worked out you know. Details here, but I, I believe that this should be closely related to the setup um, of Olson, uh, where you where you sort of use the fact that uh, making something perfect is going to get rid of sort of differential forms. Um, okay, but so um, but basically the example that um, wanted to um, um, sort of an illustration of this principle is the following calculation. Um, so let's let's consider the case where x is smooth. And D sitting inside X is a divisor, uh, is a normal crossings divisor, right? So I guess it's a it's a relative normal crossings divisor if we're over some base, some given base. Um, and then there's the following, right? So there's the following calculation. So if you consider the infinite root stack uh, of X comma D, um, so this is right. So I should say this is not quite. It's not quite a. It's not quite an algebraic stack because you get these. I mean, you get these like big uh, stabilizers, but it's not so far from one. Um, and uh, in particular, so we can do something like take the, the uh, differential forms on it. And so a calculation is that if we take um, global sections of uh, differential forms on this, this object, then this is naturally the same as differential forms uh, on X with log poles along D. And this is with profinite coefficients. So, excuse me, so when you say stack, of course you have to specify the topology. So for example, you can use, since you, you don't have yes. biases, you can say FPQC topology, but then you want to do a differential form. So that's not so, I'm not yes. sure what, what uh, the foundation. So for, for a usual mm -hmm. outing stack, of course we use that it's given by a scheme modulo uh, smooth something, I mean, mm -hmm. smooth uh, group way. But here, of course, you have to work in some with bigger thing, maybe formally smooth or limit of, I mean, so the. So, I, the so I think one way of, yeah, sorry. Sorry, okay, I, I think so one way of saying this. Oh. So, okay, so is, is a stack in the flat topology, for example? Sorry. You mean FPQC? Uh, sure. Or you could say some sort of indisyntomic topology. Yeah, FBQC topology. Or some sort of indisyntomic topology. And right, so yeah, so thanks for that question. So I, I, I should, yeah, so I should quite clarify what I mean here. Um, so one way of saying what I mean by differential forms is that. Uh, 
so um, I guess as a theorem of uh, Bargov that uh, if, you, if you form the uh, wedge powers of the cotangent complex, they are sheaves in the flat topology. So it's a theorem of thought that um, wedge powers of the cotangent complex, say on rings, uh, are sheaves uh, in the flat, uh, in the yeah, FPQC topology. And so it, it's going to make sense to evaluate these on any um, on any stack like um, like this. Um, um, but in fact, it's a little. So I said I did say differential forms here, and the reason is that uh, I guess you can sort of you can sort of regard it as a stack. I think in the I think I want to say in the in smooth topology. So so you can really just say differential forms instead of the cotangent complex. Um, so, uh, I think Fontaine uh, uh, introduced the quiet topology of quasi eta, so uh, almost atomic, but you just extract roots, so it should be connected to that. Uh, sorry, I didn't so, completely uh, catch uh, what so you said. The, there's the quiet topology, so it's a joke, uh, quiet, uh, so huh? quasi eta, so, <laughs> uh -huh. so extracting p roots of uh, uh, maybe uh, generators of the uh, of the, the monoid maybe. So, uh, <laughs> so it, it looks like uh, this infinite root thing. Um, okay, so I, uh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, not completely sure. I think that what I understand is that the, that the Kummer flat topology is closely related to this construction, yeah. but I didn't know about Fontaine's um, quiet. Yes, quiet topology a lot. <laughs> thanks, I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to look that up. Um, yeah, but this is kind of a fun sort of, yeah, sorry, sorry, just to go back to, also to Oprah's question, I mean, this is kind of a fun sort of calculation to do, like if you have, um, I mean, if you have K brackets X and you have the log structure given by X and so, so I, in fact, for what I'm saying is you, you don't actually have to go to the infinite root stack, you can do the P typical version where you take extract P power roots. And then what you're considering is you're considering something like spec of K brackets X to the one over P to the infinity and you're quotienting by uh, by the group scheme, which is uh, uh, the Tate module of mu p to the infinity. Uh, and so when you when you go up to mu p to the infinity, or when you go up to k brackets x to the one over p to the infinity, differential forms go away there. But the this group scheme is going to have a cotangent complex. And so when you form the you know, when you form the limit, um, when you form the stacky cotangent complex, so from the limit of these things, you end up recovering this log. Um, uh, cotangent complex. Um, yeah. So, um, right. so um, yeah. So I just want to go back to this, um, this principle. So in particular, it's going to follow that one can uh, can define sort of log prismatic cohomology or log crystalline cohomology or the others uh, of Say so if we're in the setup of a of a prism a comma i of an a mod i formal log scheme uh, in terms of the infinite root stack as um, but there's a bit of an asterisk here, which is that. In general, the construction of the infinite root stack, um, if, if, you, if you really sort of follow it, 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 it's going to involve some sort of tensor products. And those tensor products might not be derived. Um, and so I think that doesn't, isn't going to cause a problem for some sort of a tall theory. But for prismatic cohomology, that's going to be an issue. So this might not, this might not work in general. Um, so if you want to define log prismatic cohomology, I think this is going to this kind of thing is going to work very well. This is going to work well in, say, a very nice situation if you have a formally smooth a mod i scheme with log structure given by a relative normal crossings divisor. Um, but it might not quite give you the right thing in, in general if you do this because of these, um, these higher tours. Um, 
but what you can you can what you can do then is uh, um, is is you can that this is sort of the fundamental case, uh, and and then you can sort of animate in general. So so you can define log prismatic cohomology or log crystalline cohomology in in this special case using the infinite root stack, and then you can animate in general. So here, animate means that um, 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 you sort of simplicially resolve a log ring over a mod i. Um, and so, I, yeah, I want to I want to emphasize this 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 idea of, of taking a cohomology theory. Um, so 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 simplicially resolve a log ring over a mod i over sort of very, by sort of very special cases. And those special cases could be something like, you know, a mod i brackets x1 through xn and y1 through ym, where these are giving these variables are giving you the log structure. Um, and then and then you sort of animate in general to to define it for for a general um, log um, log ring over a mod i or log scheme. Um, and this, yeah. So I want to emphasize that this this construction um, of 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 uh, of animation in this way uh, for for piadic cohomology theories um, goes back to uh, goes back to Luke in, in in the context of derived Durham cohomology. So this is as in Lucy's construction uh, of derived Durham cohomology. So. Right, so as a result, one can recover this construction of, of log, for example, this construction of log prismatic cohomology and the sort of various types of comparison results uh, using the infinite root stack um, in this manner. Um, so I, but, and uh, it is, yeah, also for like crystalline or Durham cohomology. And yeah, I just wanna emphasize that the, the, the essential feature that to do this is that you have a cohomology theory. On the one hand, you need some sort of flat descent. So as, as an Ofer's question, um, so that you can um, you can you can evaluate it on a stack in a good way, uh, and the second is that it behaves well with respect to animation. So anything that's sort of built out of the cotangent complex um, is going to behave well um, with respect to animation. Um, so yeah. So when you animate the, mm -hmm. the you are thinking about some geometric object, but in the, in the like the cotangent complex where we don't have we, the results by. Uh, some free polynomial things, but geometrically it changes the spec. Here you work with something, maybe you want to to complete it along the original locus or do something to, or do you do you take this and, so do you have some uh, simplicity uh, resolution and do you do you huh? complete it along the kernel to the original thing or do something to localize it along the original thing or it doesn't matter? No, I don't think, I don't think you need to. I mean, so I think for example, in this, in this case, I think, so it's a, I guess an insight. So, I mean, this is sort of, I guess, comparable to, you know, we're using like the fact that if you, um, um, so I guess this is an insight of, uh, of Bot, that if you take derived Durham cohomology in the piadic setting, uh, then you're, it, it gives you the right theory, for, say, for more generally for smooth objects by the, by the Cartier, you know, by the Cartier isomorphism. Okay. And so, yeah. So, yeah. So maybe I should also add, uh, I should also say that. Um, so here, yeah, so you don't need to do any sort of further completion. I mean, you need to do the iadic p comma iadic completion as usual, but um, so here we use, um, I mean, we essentially use the Hodge tape. Variant of Cartier for log, log smoothing, Cartier type. Right, yeah, yeah, right. yes, yes. Um, yeah, so I mean, in general, it's going to be, uh, I mean, so you're going to get a theory that is, you know, controlled. So. Um, I mean, this like this this type of theory. You're, you're going to get if you have if you have an, if you have a theory that's controlled by the cotangent complex, then this uh, this sort of procedure is going to pr produce an analogous theory that's controlled by uh, well, Gaber's uh, uh, log cotangent complex. Um, so use the Hodge state filtration, and it's I guess it's a thought that log piadic derived Durham cohomology works, so it gives you the right answer for smooth schemes, not just for polynomial, for smooth algebras. So another natural thing I just uh, to recall from some discussions, I don't remember the explanation, but when you do 
the right, the wrong commodity. As far as I remember, you have some big complex, and either you can take the total with direct sum or direct product, and it gives you different things or the same thing. So, what is the answer? So, just about the right, the wrong cohomology. It's not. Uh, so you have uh, uh -huh. your uh, your. Uh, so either you do it in characteristic P or when P is important or maybe over Z, I'm not sure. So you have some nice implicit resolution. Mm -hmm. You take the Dirac complex of each and then you put a double corner. Of course, it is not in the first quadrant, it is in another quadrant. So then the total right. complex is, there are two ways at least to define the total complex. So, so they give I, you different theories. Yes. So, sorry. So I think, I think what, I think what you're saying is the question of like the Hodge filtration, but I think it's right. So I think it was the insight of, uh, of Bargov that uh, if you that in the in this piadic setting, it's it's not going to matter. Uh, at least sort of at least if I understand your question correctly, um, I mean if if you form derived. So I think I think that the so I think the distinction is equivalently between uh, derived Durham cohomology, where you uh, I think you. You don't where you don't complete with respect to the Hodge filtration, and yes. when you do, and the answer is that for smooth things it doesn't make a difference, which is not true. I mean, it's not true in characteristic zero, but it, it is true in characteristic p by the um, by the Hodge uh, by, by the by the Cartier isomorphism. Um, uh, so you mean you you start from any ring, any FP mm -hmm. algebra in characteristic p, and mm -hmm. then the two uh, p, the, the two derived around cohomologies are. Uh, are the same. This is That's what right. you say using, using a simplicial. Right. And this is in this all, all this preprint of Valgav on. on uh, Wait, sorry. Yeah, I think there was some confusion. Uh, I think Akil was. I mean, Akil, what Akil was saying only applies in the smooth case. And then for general rings, you just use the direct sum version. That's what animation does for you. So because it's a conjugate situation, which is better. So somehow. Right. I mean, you, that's what the you you don't ah, yeah. think about the direct product version after uh, proving this theorem in the smooth case. Ah, okay. So you prove in the smooth case what you said, but it is not true in general. Probably, mm -hmm. probably it is not true. You say. Yeah, it is not true in general because one is going to be complete for the Hodge filtration, and the other is not in some singular setting. Yeah. Sorry. That. Right. So uh, sure yes. it's not okay. So you take the direct sum. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thanks, Bargo, for clarifying. I think, yeah, misunderstood. Yeah, sorry for interrupt. No, no, thanks. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, sorry. So I guess I have maybe a little more than 15 minutes left. So, so now what I want to do is explain the um, stuff about symptomic cohomology. Um, so this, yeah, so this is sort of a general procedure of um, defining logarithmic versions of uh, these piadic cohomology theories. And I want to sort of apply that to, um, to this, this context of symptomic cohomology. Um, and right, so this is an, another one of these piadic cohomology theories. Um, and so let me start with the following definition, which is due to uh, uh, Fontaine Messing and Cato. Uh, so let uh, R be a um, formally smooth uh, ZP algebra. Um, so uh, Right, so first let me define it for uh, i at least p minus one. We're going to define zp of i of r to be the following uh, to be the following object. So this is going to live in the, the p complete derived category of zp. It's the fiber of phi minus uh, p to the i, which uh, which goes from the uh, um, sorry. Uh, the i stage of the Hodge filtration of, so you take the Durham complex, the p-complete Durham complex of R, and form the i stage of the Hodge filtration, and map that to uh, the Durham complex of R. So here we use, we use the p-complete Durham complex of R uh, together with uh, its, uh, with the two pieces of structure given by the crystalline Frobenius, which is an endomorphism of the Durham complex. So Crystalline Frobenius, sorry. Uh, and the Hodge filtration. Hodge, Hodge filtration. Um, so this, this naturally produces an object uh, 
living in the p-complete derived category uh, fzp. Um, and uh, right, so let, sorry, let me call the zpfi uh, font 10, um, I guess, font 10 messing in kato of, of r. So, um, right, so th this, this definition is, uh, um, one can do a little bit better when, um, uh, when i is small. So if i is less than or equal to p minus two, then one can define, in addition to the Frobenius, one can define a divided Frobenius, phi divided by p to the i, which goes from the i stage of the Hodge filtration to the Durham complex itself. So this is, this is something that's going to be natural, at least in the derived infinity category. Uh, and then, so let me define z p of i of r to be the fiber of um, phi divided by p to the i minus the inclusion from omega r greater than or equal to i into omega r of Durham complex. Okay, so this is, I guess this is what one might call symptomic homology. We shall not, no, in the first one, i is bigger than i equal to or less than? A... Uh, i is larger, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where, where is the hypothesis in number two on i used? Uh, so I guess it's being used to define this phi divided by p to the i. So, I? well, I, mean, I guess, yeah. Uh, right, so I mean, I, I guess but, you want to make this sort of natural so that, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I think one can say it, so for example, one can, you know, one can define this sort of locally in the, I mean, one can define this using like ACRIS, and then I think, uh, I think you will have an issue with the Frobenius not being divisible enough. That, yeah, thanks. Um, okay. Okay, so, so, right, so this is some general construction, and okay, so we can define it, let's, I mean, we can define this for all p-complete algebras. Uh, by animation. Um, and then we can also define it, well, so using the, well, for example, using the procedure that I just explained, or in this case, you can just do it directly, define on log p adic algebras as well. Um, right, so using this infinite root stack. So, yeah, so I guess, one of the reasons these come up is that there are comparisons to uh, there are comparisons from syntomic cohomology uh, to uh, to p-adic nearby cycles. So there are various comparisons. Well, I'm sorry, you could do it in the law case. You could either use the infinite root stack, or I suppose you just use logarithmic differentials instead. What's the how do they compare? Yeah, I mean, it would give you the same. It would be okay. yeah, it would give you the same thing. Yeah, because 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 the logarithmic differentials are also the differentials on the infinite root stack. Um, but I guess the infinite root stack will be helpful for when I want to do the integral version of these things um, in a little bit. Um, yeah, thanks. Okay, so there are various comparisons um, in the subject. Uh, so various comparisons between symptomic cohomology and uh, Piatic nearby cycles uh, after truncation. Um, so I think right. So there, there are many instances. There are many uh, examples of this in the literature. So um, for example, uh, so Kato shows that if R is uh, uh, formally smooth. over OC, so C is algebraically closed, uh, non archimedean field. You can, I think you can weaken this a little bit, so C only has to be perfectoid. Um, then uh, Z P of I of R is the truncation of, so you can consider this as a, I mean, Z P of I, I mean, you can think of this as some sort of, I mean, as you let R vary, it becomes some sort of sheaf on the pro -etale side of R. and. Uh, well, it's the truncation, uh, truncation tau less than or equal to i in the pro et al topology of the, the p-adic nearby cycle. So of r 
j lower star of the usual zp of i, where j going from spec of r join one over p into spec of r is the inclusion. So if you if you take the generic fiber, you have the the usual zp of i, the Tate twists, and the atal or pro atal topology. You push that forward to zp of i, and uh, well, I guess maybe you. I should say spoof of R, maybe I should say spoof of R because uh, we're really restricting to the special fiber. And, uh, and the statement is that it's the truncation in the pro etal topology of spoof of R of this, um, of this p adic nearby cycles. So this is for I less than or equal to P minus two, I should say. Um, so this is, this is proved by Kato. Um, uh, for um, you start from a DVR, in Kato, what, did they originally, of course, it was less sophisticated than what you said, but did they start from a DVR with perfect uh, residue field and dust considered this case? I mean, C. Oh, C is, yeah, sorry, yes. They used uh, the calculations sorry. of Kato in, uh, mm -hmm. and, and if you, but this, this statement that you said is true using, using uh, faulting support. I mean, what you say is true, that for any of yes. Sorry, what I'm saying is true, but I think, I think yeah, so you're right. I think uh, Kato is probably assuming that C is a completed algebraic closure um, of like a piatic field. But yeah, thanks for that. Um, and then uh, there's work of Kurihara, uh, which, uh, which proves, I guess, again, this, the same statement, and we won't keep repeating it. Uh, but in the case where R is now, um, uh, is now formally smooth over a DVR, Uh, but now you give it the log structure that comes from the, the special fiber. Um, right. Um, so if if you don't assume the log, if you don't put in the log structure from the special fiber, you'll get some contribution coming from logarithmic drum that forms from the special fiber, um, which I think is the setup that Korihara considers. Uh, and then uh, there's work of Suji, uh, which considers uh, R maybe formally smooth or, or semi-stable. So let's say yeah, R is semi-stable over OC. Uh, I think you're also allowed to have a divisor, uh, divisor at infinity um, here. Uh, and uh, in all weights, so no uh, bound on I, uh, but up to isogeny. So, uh, right, so somehow the ZP of I's are, are for I uh, greater than uh, P minus two are not really the right thing. They're only sort of the right thing up to isogeny. Uh, but there's a comparison with piatic nearby cycles in, in this case. Um, and, uh, uh, and more recently work by Colmez and Nizio, uh, where R is semi-stable over DVR. And again, semi-stable allows some uh, log structure um, at infinity, um, and again, rationally in all weights, or rationally or up to isogeny in all weights. Um, so it was only sort of more relatively recently that there were integral versions of these types of results, uh, because the uh, because syntomic, syntomic cohomology defined this way is not, uh, somehow it's not the right uh, construction integrally. Uh, so only recently, uh, there are integral versions. Um, and the reason is that one has to replace these ZP of I of Fontaine, Messing, and Kato uh, with something a little bit more refined that comes from prismatic cohomology instead of uh, Durham cohomology. Um, and so there's a definition, which was made by Botmoro and Schultze, Uh, so they define object ZP of I uh, for all I of R. So R is again, this piatically complete ring. Uh, and these arise as the associated gradients, associated gradients of a filtration uh, on, uh, on top on the, I guess this object that arose in uh, algebraic topology on topological cyclic homology of R with DP coefficients. Um, so these can be also defined in terms of absolute prismatic cohomology. These are defined as, so ZP of I of R is, uh, so this is discussed in the paper of Botmoro and Schultze, 
it's also a fiber of a, a divided Frobenius minus the inclusion, so minus the inclusion, which goes from absolute prismatic cohomology of R, except that now you've, uh, you've Nygaard completed, completed with respect to the Nygaard filtration, and you take the ith piece of the Nygaard filtration and you have a Broikus and Twist mapping to, again, Nygaard completed prismatic cohomology of R with this Broikus and Twist. So this comes out sort of very naturally, or this expression comes out very naturally from the expression in terms of topological cyclic homology and the sort of apparatus of, uh, of TC. So, so this, is, this is sort of an integral theory that works, uh, works in all weights. Um, and um, right, so, um, so, so for example, in, in work with Antio, uh, Moro, and Nicolas, we showed that these ZP of I is defined by uh, Bot, Moro, and Scholze agree with the Fontaine, Messing, and Cato definition in low weights or sort of up to isogeny integrally. Um, but these, these ZP of I is defined by Bot, Moro, Scholze work better integrally because, uh, so, um, sorry, right. So they, they also show that, uh, they show that the ZP of I's of R are truncated p nearby cycles uh, in all weights. Uh, if R is formally smooth over OC. Uh, and this was extended to the semi-stable case, uh, R over OC by Colmez uh, Dospinescu, Niziol, so R over OC semi-stable. Um, right. Okay, so yeah, so what I wanted to explain is that, right, uh, one can formulate a version of uh, an integral version of these types of comparison results. I wanna add one more item to this list, which occurs uh, in, uh, in the case where you're over a DVR. Um, so, uh, and, and where you do have to take into account the log structure coming from the special fiber, as well as some sort of semi-stable log structure. Um, so first is you can define the ZP of I's in the log setting, for example, using the infinite root stack, for example. Um, and I, yeah, I guess I wanna end with this theorem um, with uh, Bod and Clausen, which is gonna state that basically the, the, the theorem of Colmez and Nisiel, that you have this comparison between, uh, this rational comparison between uh, truncated p nearby cycles and, uh, um, um, Syntomic cohomology works integrally if you use these ZP of I's. So if R is semi-stable over OK, and you can generalize this a little bit, like you can allow base changes of semi-stable things as in Coleman's Musial, um, and you can allow a divisor at infinity, then the ZP of I of R with log structure, with the natural log structure, are tau greater than or equal to I of p nearby cycles. Um, so I just want to say a little bit, uh, I just want to say what goes into this. I mean, so somehow it would be really nice to have a purely sort of prismatic uh, and like piatic proof of this. Um, but what we actually do is, uh, is, to, is to use a connection between topological cyclic homology. So these ZPFIs are related to, uh, as in BMS2, they're related to topological cyclic homology, uh, which turns out to be related to the piatic K theory of the generic fiber. Um, and then what we do is we, uh, we use we use the, the Blockado or Balens and Lichtenbaum conjectures, which give you a filtration on the K theory of the generic fiber. And then you sort of try to match that up with the, the filtration on, on TC uh, of log TC uh, and, and the piatic K theory of the generic fiber. And the piatic K theory of the generic fiber is controlled by uh, like these piatic vanishing cycles thanks to the uh, Blockado conjecture. Um, and so I, th I believe this, this type of idea and of using K theory in this way is, is due to Musial. Um, but uh, in this context, it would, it would also be very nice to have a, a purely prismatic approach. So, okay, so I will stop here. So thank you very much. But, uh, but the, the result is unconditional. There is no conjecture involved there. In your oh, theorem, sorry, yeah, I should. It's unconditional, I suppose. 
you you don't need any conjecture uh, uncool well, conjecture theorem. you you said sorry you some conjecture or uh, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. I guess I'm. I sh yeah, I should have said that. So you're using like the block Cotto conjecture, uh, yeah. but yeah, what I should say is this is a theorem of of uh, yeah. Vygotsky yeah. and Roast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but somehow this is like an l adic statement, and it would be nice to sort of say purely in the p adic world. Mm -hmm. uh, but. So in the previous result, so the, in this result, you have the log structure uh, uh, used, and in the, the case of semi-stable, the number six, or before, no, 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 before number six, the, the one where you had the, uh, uh, you, okay, you have the smooth case, uh -huh. uh, but then the, you had also the, um, uh, the case of semi-stable, uh, um, uh, uh, like the semi-stable case, Arobel, Skolmer, Spinevsky. This this didn't use the log structure. Or it uses the log structure. Sorry, I, maybe in in a smooth case over OC, you don't need the log structure because a log okay. structure is sort of uniquely p-divisible. So it'll, yes. if you can put the log structure, but it doesn't affect things. And, and in the semi-stable case of an OC, you need uh, the log structure. Then I think you need the log structure, yes. Um, so maybe there's a question from the audience. Yeah, I, I have a question. I don't know whether you can hear me. Hi, yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I have a question. So this um, uh, this uh, uh, way of, of presenting things using uh, infinite root stacks, does it allow you to describe uh, Hyodokato theory? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I would love to. Yeah, I would be very interested in understanding that better. But yeah, I, I don't know. But thank, okay. thank you for the question. I was curious about that too. Thanks. So, uh, okay. so it's, it's a, uh, also a general question. So, in the Orson's approach, uh, defining block structure on, on X uh, is sending X to some uh, some special stack, which is locally like to X stack. Uh, for example, A one PM. And uh, in the other approach, instead of uh, sending x to uh, to some stack, you send a stack to to x. Uh, yes. Stack. Yes. So it's a sort of dual approach. Like uh, I think in the transversality in the Takeshi's expose, you had two two things. So even uh, either you send x to a curve or you send something to to x. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so it's yes. sort of a dual a dual approach. So in uh, uh, Arson's uh, approach. Uh, it's a property of morphisms of uh, uh, or even uh, uh, objects, uh, log structure. It could be read of, uh, on the uh, on the on the map to the, to, to this uh, log uh, log thing uh, log stack. And mm -hmm. so I wonder whether uh, similarly you can. Uh, so yeah, there are two questions. Uh, first of all, uh, which type of stack would give you a, a log structure? You said that. Uh, uh, somehow you can uh, concoct the log structure from something algebraic, just a, a, a stack, something like a root stack. So, uh, what are the properties which would uh, characterize a root stack and, uh, and, and give you some uh, some log structure? And also, uh, what properties of log structure you, could you read up from the this uh, uh, root stack, like uh, log smoothness, log flatness, etc. Um, yeah, thanks for those questions. I think, those, yeah, I I believe that. So in uh, Talpo and Vistoli's paper, they explore some of them. So in particular, I think they show that you can read off things like log flatness and log uh, kumaritalness in terms of uh, what happens on the infinite root stack. Um, huh. I think I think uh, they also discuss the relation. Um, I think they also show that you can recover like a fine and saturated log scheme from the infinite root stack. 
Uh, mm -hmm. but it's not fully faithful, but you can still recover it up to isomorphism. And I think they also probably discuss which stacks are of this form. I mean, they, for example, they, and they always have this particular form that like they, they live over a scheme and the fibers are these, um, like, I, I guess sort of pro-finite tori, um, like classifying well, spaces. Of, sort of uh, internal uh, characterization of these wood stacks. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but it might be in their paper, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. yeah, but thanks. So, so the infinite root stack, like if you have a, if you just take a, uh, yeah, maybe I, uh, mm -hmm. you said something about recovering a finite saturated log scheme, not not as an equivalence, but only after isomorphism. Can do you remember what it was? Or? I believe I believe what they prove is that if you have if the if the infinite root stack if two infinite root stacks are isomorphic, then the log schemes are isomorphic, is my understanding. Um, but on the other hand, it, I think they also show that it's not fully faithful, that functor from log schemes to, to stacks in this manner. But for isomorphisms, it is. That is, the isomorphisms correspond, but not the maps. Is it the idea or that? OK. Uh, <laughs> what? I think the statement is just that if they're isomorphic as stacks, then the log schemes are isomorphic. I think it's not necessarily, yeah. Not, a, not an isomorphism on the set of isomorph. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's my that's my understanding. Yeah. Uh, so here, the in the last uh, thing, you said that. Uh, you you interpret this ZPI in terms of topological cyclic homology theory and mm -hmm. theory of the general fiber. So do you use results relating to the K theory of the general fiber to some motivic to something involving a talc homology like spectral cycle? I mean, which I, I think there are yes. things are cool now, but do you use such results here? For, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, so we're using like the, the K theory of the generic fiber is related to a tall cohomology I mean, by the like Blockado and Valence and Lichtenbaum conjectures. And so we're, we're using that. Um, and so, yeah, so basically the point is to match up like, uh, I mean, you have, you have something like TC of R, I mean, maybe with log structure or, yeah. So uh, which is, which is, you know, got, which is filtered by these ZP of I's. And then you have something like the K theory of R adjoined one over P I mean, let's just assume that R is like strictly Hensalian. So this is close to K of R to begin with. Uh, yeah. And then, then you're using the fact that this has a filtration by Blockado, Bales and Lichtenbaum, and this has a filtration by Bottmore and Schulze. And then the claim is that those can be made to match up. And to do that, one has to sort of take left derived or animate the, the right-hand side and actually use these results of Block and Cado and and followed by others of uh, on controlling piadic vanishing cycles or piadic nearby cycles uh, in terms of differential forms. But you also need the K theory results which which compute the, the K theory of R1 over P. Yes, we need the K theory results. Yeah. Okay, you just explained to me that several mm -hmm. years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, is there any other question? Yeah, I have a question. So uh, the TC of R, which you, which you wrote here, is, is this just in a philosophical sense or did you de really define it in the case where there is a log structure? I mean, so, right, so I, I think you can define TC, you can define log TC, sorry, I think maybe this also came from the chat. So you can also define, uh, I mean, you can define like log Hochschild homology, log TC and so forth using this, this procedure because TC satisfies flat descent and behaves well with respect to animation. Okay. Um, and I think this will agree with, you know, I, so I think Hasselholt and Madsen, uh, for example, consider version of log TC and I think it will be equivalent. Um, uh, so, so uh, okay, so you're using the infinite root stacks to define TC, et cetera, of, of logarithmic things, but does it also give you a definition of K theory of log, log, uh, uh, log uh, schemes or log uh, rings? Right. Oh, yeah. So one thing I should say is that it's not it's not the it's not the TC or the K theory of of sheaves on the log on the infinite root stack. 
um, but it's this thing defined by flat descent. And so since K theory doesn't define, doesn't satisfy flat descent, I wouldn't uh, uh -huh. see how to define, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it would be nice if there was really a category here that one could just sort of apply it to the category. And, mm -hmm. but here it's really being defined by flat descent. And, uh, using this um, whole stack uh, technique, can you adapt uh, what uh, Braga uh, told us? Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think at least, yeah, I, I think at least you, like for a log scheme, you will, you can do what, yeah, but I, I don't know, for example, yeah, I mean, so I, yeah, I hope that, for example, some of the techniques uh, that, uh, you know, that, that Barga was explaining for working with these, uh, you know, with absolute prismatic cohomology where, um, I mean, so right. So I mean, this is you know this the statement about the ZPFIs. I mean, these types of statements are I mean, they're statements equivalently about absolute prismatic cohomology, um, or some sort of filtered Ny Nygaard eigenspace of uh, prismatic mm -hmm. cohomology. And um, so I mean, these statements were proved, for example, by uh, Batmaro Schulze and uh, Komenstos Minuskunisiol over OC uh, using I mean, using the fact that you have like nice expressions uh, for uh, like for a and cohomology like. By these Q to ROM complexes and given by L ADA in particular and so forth. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, it would be, I, I certainly hope it there will be something like that. There will be some sort of something like an L ADA explanation for these types of statements over OK. And then maybe one could get hope for a purely piadic approach to these things. Um, but um, no. Okay. Yeah. So another well, I don't know if I can uh, just uh, remember another technical point. So when <laughs> when you looked at the uh, well, it was right, well, when you try to do uh, the uh, omega i on some well, maybe <laughs> put it in this talk or in another. Uh, maybe you uh, could write him. Uh, <laughs> no, you you mentioned the result uh, the. <laughs> that uh, that wedge i of the cotangent complex is a shift. Yes, uh, but this was uh, yes, uh, but this I think me means that well, of course, this is in some derived sense, but this means that you do uh, just check uh, cover or, or hyper cover. I think it was proved for just check covers. Yes, cohomology usually is defined in general as a limit of a hyper covers, which you cannot avoid. I mean, if you do unbounded things, so. So, so it is. Uh -huh. not, so here there is could be. Well, I'm not uh, working with this, but uh, it is, doesn't cause a problem here. That's yeah. So thanks for. Yeah. Right. I mean, so I think that is. Uh, I mean, as far as I know, that's an open question of whether the cotangent complex and its wedge powers are hypersheaves for the flat topology. I think this was raised maybe in Batmaro and Schulze's uh, paper, uh, second paper. Um, but so I, I think in the setting, in this particular setting, like where you're taking, inf at least when you're taking uh, these infinite root stacks uh, of sort of pretty nice things, and then from which you're animating, um, there's no issue because everything, for example, is going to be like in symptomic, and then that's going to force everything to be uh, um, sort of bounded, you know, formally bounded. Um, and, and so, so these issues of hypercompleteness are, are not going to not going to show up because you're not going to have uh, stuff in cohomological degree. Uh, Going off to cohomological degree minus infinity. Um, yeah, so nice thing, yes. For nice things, uh, like you start from a, mm. a smooth with normal causing divide. Okay, then everything will be well, so, yes. Okay, understand. Then the convergence questions. Okay, so the, are there any other questions? No, okay, in which case, uh, uh, or in the computer. No, no, no. Okay, so let us uh, thank the speaker <laughs> again for the very illuminating but technical. Uh, <laughs> and, thank uh, you, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, uh, we resume tomorrow uh, at nine. At nine French, uh, yeah. nine, nine French time. Okay. <laughs>